Awesome. Welcome in, everyone. We'll be getting started here in just a few minutes. Welcome in, welcome in. We will be getting started here in just about one more minute. Okay, so a few more people funneling in. Th again, thank you all for joining us today. Well, Mike. Kirk, Dwight, Chris, great to all have you. Okay, we will go ahead and get started. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. We're looking forward to putting together a, a great micro demo for you all today. So what is on the agenda? We're first going to talk about who is Oasis? What do we do and why Oasis? So we're going to talk first about our partnership approach. Um, we'll go into a NetSuite overview, and then we'll get to the main event, which is going to take up the bulk of today's time, the product demo. Um, during this phase, we'll, we'll review a NetSuite overview. We'll go over dashboards, uh, user interface, navigation, as well as financial reporting. Uh, today's webinar should last just around 30 minutes, and uh, hopefully this aligns with everybody's expectations. Okay, so just some brief introductions. My name is Christian Audius. I'm an account executive here at Oasis Solutions. Uh, I've been with the company for just over two years, and I'm I'm out of Lexington, Kentucky. And one of my primary responsibilities here is to uh, to help our clients understand what our differentiators are, and really how we can help them proceed through this ERP journey. Um, I'll pass it over to my associate Ryan Balzer. Absolutely. Thanks, Christian. Hey, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Ryan Balzer. I'm a principal consultant and solution architect here at Oasis Solutions. Uh, the dual titles in my role represents a couple of different hats that I wear in the practice. Uh, from a principal consultant, I'm still very heavily uh, involved on the delivery side, so implementation of large-scale ERPs. Uh, from a solution architect, I also help support our sales team uh, by getting to meet some prospects and understanding their business and putting together some demos from them on, on, on the pre-sale side of things. I've been with Oasis for a little, uh, going on about two years now, but I've been in the NetSuite ecosystem for a little over 12 years. I actually found NetSuite uh, when I worked for a uh, light manufacturer, 3PL, here in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we were looking for an ERP to implement. We ultimately chose NetSuite. I always like to say that to folks that haven't implemented NetSuite yet because I understand what it's like um, on the other side of the table, right? Looking for an uh, ERP and vetting one to implement. Uh, I'm based out of uh, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, excited to meet everybody and um, looking forward to uh, giving you guys a good micro demo, demo today. Thanks so much, Ryan. So today, everyone, we are going to talk quite a bit about technology, but something I want to talk about on the front end are people and process. Uh, something here at Oasis that we say early and often are the major inputs are still in between the chair and the keyboard. We want to make sure that we're investing in the right technology, but we want to make sure that 
all of our end users feel like comfortable, capable, competent users. Uh, we also want to make sure that we're leveraging the application to the best of our clients' ability. So that's how we're here to partner together with our clients for the long term um, to ensure the success of their organization. Now, a little bit about Oasis Solutions. We were actually founded in 1991 uh, here in Louisville, Kentucky. So we've been working in this space as a solution provider partner uh, for the past 30 plus years. Uh, now, again, we're headquartered here in Louisville, but to Ryan's point, we do have employees in multiple regions across the U.S., still a good base of people here in Louisville, Kentucky. However, we're always looking for qualified team members who have worked in industry before, uh, whether it be uh, the qualified team, our qualified team that consists of CPAs, MBAs, and even former CFOs, or be people who work in the NetSuite ecosystem, as, um, as Ryan had stated that he does. Now, uh, something that is noteworthy is we don't actually practice tax and audit. Really, our goal here at Oasis is to um, use our experience to help you leverage the NetSuite application to the best of your company's ability, making sure you're really getting JUSA out of the squeeze. Um, and we do provide nationwide services. So we have currently 500 clients that we uh, service across the country, and, and we're about in 36 states as it stands today. Uh, I would like to point our attention to some of our most recent accolades here at the bottom of the slide. So we are a regular Fast 50 growth company here in Louisville that is closely aligned with our NetSuite practice. And we've actually been a partner with NetSuite uh, dating back to 2012. So we've had a lot of experience being a partner and doing large scale implementations for our clients. Uh, we also are best place to work, not only in the state of Kentucky, but in the city of Louisville. And this is really important to us because ultimately we work in the people business. We find that if we have happy people, we're ultimately going to have happy clients. Um, and then we all also are on a few uh, industry specific value at a reseller top 100 lists. Now, just recently, we were actually awarded... Uh, the Oracle NetSuite 2023 Growth Partner of the Year, uh, which was a huge honor and I think a big testament to all the great work that our consultants do with our, with our clients. Um, the vast majority of our business to this day comes from reference. So ultimately, we're looking to create referenceable clients, hopefully that we can partner with for the life of their business. Uh, there are about 75 solution provider partners that do exactly what uh, we do. So that this was a big accolade for us. And this slide is just to give us an idea into the breadth and depth of our services. Okay, so first and foremost, one of our primary objectives is to help our clients select the, the correct software. Um, one of the software, uh, we do have two different practices internally. So we have a NetSuite and a Sage practice. Today, we're going to talk about NetSuite. Now, from a technical level, data conversion, system integration, middleware development is a big part of what we do. Now, we're not actually building any applications. However, we will integrate different data sources into um, our client's NetSuite application if the need does arise. And then uh, hands-on training, user adoption, change management consulting is really where the rubber hits the road for the, on these projects. So making sure, again, that the end users feel like they really own the application. And again, to my point earlier, that they're com comfortable, capable, and competent users. Uh, we have a number of best practices that we developed around hands-on training and user adoption, such as 5 by 5 testing, where we say, go do five transactions in NetSuite by 5 p.m. daily, five days a week. Um, this is an example of just one muscle memory exercise that we use to make sure that our clients are up to speed. So ultimately, go live is a non-event. And then we do provide on-site implementation and training on our client schedule. So um, one of the one of the benefits of working with a solution provider partner such as Oasis is we uh, actually will work with our clients pre-sale of the software. Um, all the way to implementation and beyond. So um, we will be the one team that you ultimately work with before, during, and after the pro project. Uh, our goal is to have such a good implementation experience that we want to continue to leverage uh, Oasis uh, as your preferred um, advisor as time goes on. And then we do have free monthly webinar series, free annual user group meetings. This is typically centered around some third-party applications that integrate directly into NetSuite, as well as that free annual user group meeting, helping our clients understand what some of the new functionality they're going to get by virtue of being on the NetSuite application. NetSuite actually updates uh, twice per year, so we want to help our clients understand what that new functionality looks like. And then we'll move over to a solution overview. So Ryan, I will pass it over to you, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, so guys, I just have a couple slides that I like to go through before we jump into the application itself. And the first slide I like to cover is this solution overview slide. A lot of times when we uh, start talking to companies that are looking to implement their first ERP or maybe switch ERPs, uh, they'll have uh, some CRM in one system. They might have their inventory management in another system. They might have another piece of software that does all their payables, and they might have another piece of software that does their customer service. The power of NetSuite is you can really bring all those different business functions into the same ERP on the same platform, on the same database. Uh, what's the benefit of that? Well, now if you're looking to do some cross-functional uh, cross reporting from different departments, right? In the old days when we're in disparate systems that aren't talking to each other or not the same system, we usually have to pull CSV files or pull some Excel uh, pull some data into Excel, run some pivot tables, ultimately combine some Excel documents to get the reporting that we're looking for. However, in a modern ERP like NetSuite, you have all of these different functions, all these different um, business areas, all in the same application. So it's very easy to report across these different uh, lines of or areas of your business. Go to the next slide. This is our NetSuite stairway slide, and, and I like to bring this one up because a lot of, t a lot of times when we're uh, talking to folks that are looking for a new ERP, uh, we always like to think of that go live as the finish line, right? We made it through the implementation. We're live on the software. That's the finish line for us. Um, with, a, with a modern ERP that's scalable and as robust as NetSuite, um, at Oasis, we really, really like to think of go, of go live as the starting line. Right, so once you're in that application, once you've got core financials, maybe CRM and some item management in NetSuite, you can look to phase it out. Maybe in a phase two, we, we bring in quality management or maybe warehouse management capabilities, right? Maybe we then look to leverage some planning and budgeting in future phases. Maybe we're looking to, for some e-commerce integration, right? And ultimately in a, in a platform as flexible and scalable as NetSuite, it really allows you to plan out that that roadmap for your business. Because once you land in NetSuite, ultimately you can expand and, and bring those uh, bring additional efficiencies to the other areas of your business. All right, I promised I only had a couple slides to go through. So I'm gonna now share my screen and we will jump over in the NetSuite and take a little view of the product itself. And everybody All we right. need this to be very interactive. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to raise your hand at any time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and by all means, put some questions in the chat and we would love to get to those as well. All right. So everyone should be seeing uh, my web browser. And that's the first, that's the place that I start off, right? So um, NetSuite is a web-based uh, application. It, it was the first and only ERP that was born into the cloud. There is no on-premise version of NetSuite. There will not be an on-premise NetSuite. It was born in architect for cloud uh, computing. So what does that mean? It means no more messy VPN software that we have to connect to get back to our corporate network. Uh, we don't have to install um, software clients on any machines, right? That sort of thing. No matter where you're at in the world, as long as you have a web browser uh, and an internet connection, you can log on to your NetSuite instance and, and, and transact and, and, and do business in your ERP. All right, the first time that we log on to NetSuite, we're gonna be met with a, a, a home dashboard that looks similar to this. So I'm gonna go through and just kind of um, describe the home dashboard and what we're looking at. First thing I wanna draw your attention to up in the top right-hand corner, you can see that I'm logged on as a user named Carol Morgan. Now, Carol Morgan is logged on as a controller role. When I hover over it, you can see that I'm actually assigned multiple roles to this user. So NetSuite is a role-based application and the role that you assign the user determines what the user can and can't see, what the user can and can't do in the application. So that's one of the first lines of security that we have in the application. Navigation. So a lot of softwares and a lot of legacy ERPs are clunky to navigate and hard to find the data that you're looking for. For instance, if I was looking for a contact at a customer that I had, I could go to my classic ribbon navigation, I could go to customers, lists, and contacts, and I can be met with a, a list of contacts at all the different customers that we have. To me, I think that's more, that's more legacy software, right? And NetSuite has some other easier ways to navigate within the software. My favorite is in the top middle here. That's called our global search. I really consider this Google for your NetSuite account. Every record in NetSuite is indexed, and you're able to find it by, um, by looking for it in this global search. So in that example that I was talking about before, 
maybe I have a, a contact named John at a company that I want to try and find John's contacts information. I can come into global search and I can type the word John and you're going to see it's going to return some contacts, some sales tax groups, some employees with the name John, some customers with the name John in it as well. So it returns a lot of values for me. I actually, with global search, have the ability to filter the results that I see. So if I type in the first three letters of the record type that I'm looking for, so it's a contact, so C-O-N colon John. Now you'll see it filters the results and I'm only seeing contacts with the word John in it. So John Walker was the contact that I'm looking for. I can very easily click on this record. It's gonna take me to his contact record so I can see all of his contact information. So global search, a very easy, very user-friendly way to find the data you're looking for. As far as navigation goes, if we go all the way over to the far left-hand side, we see it looks like a three quarters of a clock with an arrow in it. That's our recent records. So as we're browsing NetSuite and going about our day-to-day -day job, we're jumping from an invoice record to an expense report to a customer record. And as we do so, we're leaving little breadcrumbs behind to let NetSuite know where we've been. So let's say I was on an invoice and then I jumped over to an expense report and, and shoot, you know what? I need to get back to that invoice that I was just on because I, I forgot to do something to it. I can come to my recent records and I can find all those records that I was recently on. And with one click, I can get back to what I was looking for. So NetSuite from a navigation standpoint, very easy to navigate, very easy to find the data and the information that we're looking for. That's everything that I call above the fold or above this blue line. Everything below this blue line is what we call our home dashboard. And our home dashboard is separated into what we call portlets. And our portlets are these kind of white um, boxes that you see uh, on the dashboard. Every user has the ability to customize their dashboard. Um, so they can, it's drag and drop, right? So if you want to see a specific portlet in the middle, you drag it. Maybe you want to see it on the side, you drag and drop, right? You don't need to get IT involved to uh, help you customize your dashboard. Maybe I want to add a certain portlet to my dashboard. I can click on personalize and maybe I want to bring in a calendar portlet. So I have a calendar on my dashboard to see all the tasks that are assigned to me for that day. So again, with a, with a click of a mouse and a drag and a drag of the portlet, it, it's easily set up and viewable now on my dashboard. If I don't like that there, I can always hover over and remove. So from a user perspective, we do have control over uh, the dashboard that we see and the look and feel. Now there's a bunch of different types of dashboard portlets that we can cover here quickly. Uh, obviously when we log in, uh, there's gonna be some navigation portlets. So some tile portlets and some navigation shortcuts. And one thing I should pause and say, the information that we see on this dashboard is gonna be very financial focused. And the reason that is, is because I'm logged in as a controller. If I was logged in as a sales manager, for example, I would see a similar dashboard, but the, but the data and the information I would see would be more sales tactical, right? Um, sales this month, the last month, new leads this month, the last month, that sort of thing. So your, your uh, role not only controls your permissions, it also controls the dashboard that you see as well. We have some other uh, dashboard portlets as well. We have KPI meters, so I can come in here and either sales or payables, right? I can have a, a, a KPI meter, so I can very easily come and check and kind of get a thumb on the pulse of the health of certain departments in my, uh, in my company. If we come all the way over to the left-hand side, we see our reminders portlet. Our reminders portlet uh, team is probably one of my favorite portlets that we have in NetSuite because if you set it up correctly for the users, it really drives that day-to-day -day functionality that the user needs to do. So for example, in my reminders port that I see, I have three expense reports that need to, uh, that need to be approved. I have nine bills that are due that need to be paid. I have five sales orders that need to be invoiced. If I want to take a look at those expense reports, I can very easily just click on the link and it's going to take me to a list of the expense reports that are pending approval. So I would have the ability then to uh, view or edit any one of these expense reports, right? Double check, make sure it all looks accurate and um, good. We can come back here, we can say, yep, I'm gonna go ahead and approve that. We approve the expense report. And now when we come back to the actual expense report, it was pending accounting approval. And now when we refresh our screen, we're going to see that it was approved by accounting and it's ready to be paid back to the employee. So the so our reminders portlet, again, if it's set up, and you can see, right, as we approve these, 
uh, our reminders port clicks down from three to two to one, and eventually the expense reports to approve would fall off. Then we could move on to the bills that we have to pay and then the sales orders that we have to invoice. And then ultimately, once your reminders portlet is clean team, uh, your day to day um, your day to day functionality is completed and you can move on to other work that you have in the business. Maybe maybe you're working on a project or something like that. But again, your reminders portlet, a great way so that we're not emailing uh, back and forth. Hey, I'm checking on the approval of my expense report, you know, that sort of thing. It's all being driven by the system. Another portlet that we have down here is our key performance indicators. And this is another uh, great tool to come. And again, quick thumb on the pulse. What's the health of the different departments of my company? So for example, I can see payables. Uh, I can see what they were end of last month compared, or end of this month compared to end of last month, right? A comparative range. Are we up or are we down on our payables? Each one of these KPIs team, I can very easily click on this icon. And it's going to convert that KPI into a, a trend graph. I can also make it a bar graph as well. And what this allows me then to do is export this graph. Maybe I put it in a slide deck. Maybe I put it in a presentation that I'm giving to a leadership team, right? So the ability to get this information out of NetSuite in a graphical format uh, and use it in a presentation. Our KPI uh, portlet is also very interactive. So for example, if I'm looking at our payables by example, and I see we're currently at $1.2 million. I'm curious, that seems a little high, so I can click on that, and it's gonna take me to an AP aging uh, summary report. So I can see what makes up that $1.2 million. Well, here I see Crown Equipment. I have um, about 430,000 outstanding to them. I can actually click on that and see the detail that makes up that 431,000. As I'm reviewing this, I can look at all the different uh, open AP bills that I have. I have this one for 395,000 that seemed a little high, so I can very easily from that screen click on it and open it and review the bill. So I can, um, like I said, review, uh, take a look at it. So our KPI meters, uh, KPI meters, interactive, a great way to get data um, uh, at, at your fingertips and a great way to then convert that data into a um, chart or a graph that we can then use in a presentation. All right, I want to talk about financial reporting for a little bit because that's another place where I think NetSuite shines. So I'm going to jump into reports. I'm going to go to financials. I'm just going to look at an income statement. From a, from a financial reporting uh, capability, NetSuite has some dimensions that we add into our natural chart of accounts. And those dimensions we call financial segments in NetSuite. Uh, the uh, the four that, we're, that we primarily talk about are going to be subsidiary, department, class, and location. Subsidiary is a, is a big one. If we are managing multiple subsidiaries, right? So, um, you know, maybe there's a parent company and we have uh, multiple subsidiaries underneath that. A lot of times we see those are tracked in maybe separate QuickBook uh, incident, or, uh, app, or, sorry, instances. Um, maybe one of them's done in Excel, right? It's smaller. And so what that does is it, it makes consolidation and roll up of the financials very difficult to do. Well, in NetSuite, we, uh, NetSuite allows us to tag our transactions with the subsidiary um, segment. And what that does is it allows us to multi or to manage multiple subsidiaries in the same NetSuite uh, environment. So what does that look like? All right, I'm looking at an income statement right now. If I come down to my filter region, I have my subsidiary context. Right, so maybe I just want to see uh, my uh, income statement for just my Oasis Inc. subsidiary. I can click on that, and it's going to filter, and it's going to show me everything just for that particular subsidiary. Maybe I want to look at it at, from a consolidated roll-up standpoint. Right, again, now I'm not, I'm not exporting uh, income statements and combining them to do my consolidation. I'm simply choosing the, to show, tell Netsuite I want to see my income statement consolidated. I hit refresh and it's going to refresh and it's going to show me from a consolidated standpoint what my income statement looks like. Maybe I want to see this broken out uh, comparatively by subsidiary. I can do that very easily here too. I can click on my column filter and I can say, you know what, I want my columns to represent subsidiaries. And now when I refresh, I can see a side-by-side -side comparison of the subsidiaries um, income statement that I have here in NetSuite. There's another uh, financial segment that we have in NetSuite called class. And a lot of times we, um, our clients will leverage class for different lines of business or maybe different product types that we sell. 
And so again, we're, we're able to tag transactions with that dimensional segment. And it allows us to then, for instance, take our um, income statement and break it out by that class segment, right? So now I have an income statement for each different product line or each different uh, re uh, line of uh, business that I have within my organization. Also within NetSuite, we have the ability to uh, manipulate some reports as well. So we can email these reports directly from NetSuite. Um, we also have the ability to schedule reports from NetSuite. So not just income statement, but any reports that we have. Uh, if anyone is used to using Crystal reports, for example, as a report writer, I've had to do that in a previous life. To schedule reports can be cumbersome and not every user is, is comfortable um, scheduling those reports in Crystal, right? In NetSuite, all I have to do is click on the schedule button. I can come here, I can set the schedule of when I want this report to be sent out. I can even come down here and define the um, recipients that uh, need to receive this report. I hit save. That's all I have to do. Now, every Monday at 1225, this report's going to go out to the folks that I've copied as recipients on this schedule. Real quick, team, I want to finish up. And again, I know this is a micro demo. demo. There's so much I'd love to be able to show you. But the power of the platform, I want to spend a couple minutes on. I'm going to go to a customer record. And I think looking at the customer record really helps um, highlight the power of having all of our different business processes all in the same application, all in the same ERP. So here's a customer record. Again, it's the same uh, information that you would uh, you would expect to collect on a customer record. So what's the customer name, address, email address, phone number, website, that sort of stuff. But when I come down here in the sub tabs, I can see under my sales sub tab, I can see every transaction I've ever had with this particular customer. So I can see all the payments, all the item fulfillments, sales orders, invoices, and so on. I can also see all the items that uh, this customer has ever purchased. So what is this customer buying from us? How many? What's the total quantity? Right? I can see the sales team. So is it a, a do we do one-to-one -one relationship between sales rep and customer, or do we do team selling? NetSuite can support either or. I can come to the financial sub tab. I can very easily see uh, the financial information um, for this particular client. I can see their credit limit. I can see of that credit limit how much they have available. And I can even come down here and see some more detailed balance information. Scrolling over, obviously we can uh, record one or multiple addresses for that customer. The communication sub tab is one of my favorites and I do wanna spend a minute talking about this. Uh, we have the ability to upload any files. So if we have any contracts or any documents uh, related to this customer that we wanna store in the ERP on this customer record, we have the ability to do that right here. We do have the ability to track any tasks, any phone calls, or any events that we've had with this customer. We can even create a task and assign it to other users within our organization. For example, follow up with this customer in, in, in two weeks. I can assign that to Christian, and in two weeks, Christian will get a notification that he needs to follow up with this customer. Next sub-tab over is our, is our messages sub-tab, and this is probably one of my favorites. So we have the ability to generate an email um, out of NetSuite. And the nice thing about generating the email uh, out, out of NetSuite is once we send that email, that email will get logged right here on the customer record. So now we've emailed the customer. They have the email in their inbox. They open it up and they reply back with a question. Any replies to and from the original email that was created in NetSuite also get logged on the customer record. So what's a good use case for that? We're emailing out invoices. Right, so if we email our invoice to the customer from NetSuite, if the customer has any questions on the invoice and replies to that email, we'll have that running conversation, uh, running conversation history on the actual customer record. We also, the last tab I'm gonna draw our attention to, because I know we're getting close to our 30 minutes team, uh, is the customer 360 tab. And this is a great way to, again, quickly understand the health of the relationship with this customer. So I have a customer scorecard, so I can see the number of orders and the number of fulfillments and invoices. I can see what their last year's sales were, what their year-to-date sales were, and total invoice value right from the customer record. I can also click on the next sub-tab over, and I can see any open sales orders. I can also see any open invoices or any outstanding credits that haven't been applied yet. Again, I can see what are those top items sold, and what's the total sum of, the, of those sales for us. 
I can see 12 month, uh, 12 month rolling history of sales. So I can see, is there, is there any seasonality in, in the relationship with this customer? Are they ordering more back to school stuff or are they ordering more before Christmas? Right. Um, that sort of thing. I can also see 12 months returned item returns. And then I see some customer payment information. So Tim, I'm going to jump back to the home dashboard here. Uh, I appreciate the time. My goal today was to give uh, a little bit of an appetizer into what uh, the breadth and the depth of an application like NetSuite would um, look and feel like. Um, I would be happy to uh, work with Christian to um, put together a more uh, a more targeted, a more defined demo for uh, for anyone that's interested. Uh, but for now, Christian, I'm going to turn it back over to you to to wrap up. Absolutely. Thanks, Ryan. And Mike actually had a question, uh, Ryan, that you might be able to hop in on. Uh, yeah. Mike asked, does Nestle have some e-commerce capabilities? Lots of good Ab information, prevented, very professionally well done. Awesome. No, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, absolutely. So there is Sweet Commerce Advanced. So NetSuite does have its own e-commerce platform built into the application. Um, so we've done a lot, you know, we have a lot of customers that build their e-commerce site on this application itself. NetSuite is also uh, also has an open API and is also um, very friendly to integrate with, right? And so a lot of our customers, maybe they already have a Shopify web store or something like that that they've spent a lot of time developing and, and, and that's what they sell on. Uh, we can very easily integrate to any one of those um, e-commerce sites as well. So then uh, the e-commerce is still your front end, but those orders flow into NetSuite uh, automatically. So yeah, great question. Lots of different options that we have when it comes to e-commerce. Thanks so much, Ryan. And, uh, and everybody, I really appreciate the time today. I know Ryan does as well. Uh, I did want to throw up a, a QR code if we want to talk a little bit more in depth about how Oasis can help. Uh, we always preach diagnosis before prescription. So something that we would love to do is to potentially go on site with anybody in their team, sit down, talk about um, your current application environment and how we can help. Feel free to scan the QR code or reach out to me directly. Uh, my email address is uh, C Arias, A R I A S, at oasis.solutions.com. Thank you so much, everyone.